hello to another live stream, which we've moved into the series that are beyond the fringe. My guest today is Chris Clarkson. He's a presenter, voiceover actor, and uh, a sector sailor, which is a phrase that I've kind of made up, so I'm testing the waters with it. But uh, he has worked on TV, short films, he's a magician, he's a voiceover artist, he's done commercials, he's been a presenter, and has this I think if, if eclectic was going to be used, I think we can um, give that to Chris. Uh, but also he trained at Bretton Hall, which usually isn't relevant, uh, but I did too, so hurrah. Um, and he's also a long-standing member of Equity. He's currently the Secretary of the Manchester branch, uh, which uh, Equity is the performance and production creatives Union, of which the list of members are extensive, and just like you do not want to miss people on an awards ceremony speech, you do not want to miss people off the specialisms list. It's not just a union for actors. We're going to talk for about 30 minutes uh, about being an industry professional, uh, what brings us together, and um, also bearing in mind my recent guest, Brendan Bradley, who uh, is currently on the, uh, the strike captain at the Paramount Studios. And in his video shorts, he eloquently opens each video with, I'm Brendan Bradley, you probably don't recognize me, and that's the point. I'm not a celebrity, I'm not a millionaire, I'm a jobber. And I think all people who work in the entertainment industry for a living, predominantly we identify as being jobbers and we're proud to be doing the thing that we love. So with that, I'm going to welcome on screen, uh, Mr. Chris Clarkson. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> good, good, thank you for joining me. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Very exciting. I've been talking to people who were part of the Edinburgh Fringe, so I kind of had a guest list that was ready-made. I just had to pick and schedule them, which can be tricky in itself. And now I've moved out of fringe and we are beyond the fringe. I want to talk to other people that I've had in my world for a while. And I don't even want to count how many years we've probably been crossing paths at conferences <laughs> and stuff for equity. But you've been very much part of the Manchester equity, which we'll talk a little bit about, because the reason you've been invited this time is that your name comes up a lot when equity branches are talking on my little forums about how how do we how do we grow a branch and i think that also goes to how do we grow an audience and the irony is we spend a lot of time trying to find an audience and with growing the branch so it's really going to be interesting to talk about that but firstly tell me about you as a, a sailor sector i don't a sector sailor um what <laughs> never heard that you? phrase before <laughs> i'm not nautical <laughs> um, uh, yes, I, I trained as an actor at Bretton Hall, yeah, the old school tie, um, many moons ago, and I've worked relatively consistently, not as consistently as I'd like to, I'll be honest, uh, within acting, and I have diversified over the course of time into various other areas of the industry, so I work as a presenter, a voiceover, a magician, all sorts of extra things as well, anything, I'll basically, I'll do anything for a fiver, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> so, just... The amount of sectors that you do cover for the industry mm. must give you um, lots of strings to your bow. And how, how do you maximise those? And what do you do? You also advise young actors, young performers. Where where do you feel that you sit in the world of um, existing in the industry? Because we're not always in the green room. We're not always travelling, although we can feel that way sometimes. We're not always applying or auditioning. But there is this time when you kind of realise you've got a career. How how do you how do you give give back? Um, I well, I I do mentor a few people who ask me to occasionally uh, because you've got experience. You want to share it on. I I had people helping me when I started out, so there's no reason why I shouldn't carry on doing that for other people as well. Um, I I realised very early on in my career that I'm not going to earn all of my money from being an actor because that's just not how it works. So I decided to, as most people, do a temping job. So I was selling selling things for O2 uh, from a call centre, and I hated my 
existence at that point. It was horrible. I realized that that kind of job is just not for me. It doesn't suit the way that my brain is, uh, is tied up and engaged. So I started to learn other performance skills to help me along the route. I started out by learning to stilt walk. So um, I learned, I, well, sorry, no, I started out with skins work first, which is costume characters, you know, like a football mascot type thing. Mm -hmm. Learned how to do that. And then I found out that stilt walking pays an extra 20 quid. So I, le I learned how to stilt walk. And then I found out that living statues learned, earned a little bit more money on top of that. So I learned how to do that. And over the years, I've kept adding to the, the repertoire of skills I had. When I started out with my first agent, I I was into talking to her about um, what I'd like to do, what I need to do. And she pointed out how narrow my field of vision was in terms of what she can submit me for. So we came up for a t with a term called the actor's tool kit, um, which I've never heard anyone else use. So I'm going to I'm going to copyright it at some point. Um, <laughs> it's a case of if a if a submission for a role comes in uh, via Spotlight or whichever casting network you use, if a, if a, a submission comes in for um, someone a white male my age i go right yes i've got that i can do that can you sing you go ah singing right uh excuse me just talk it uh, there, <laughs> okay, there we go i've got singing. can you still talk ah right yeah, uh, there we go there we are it's there can you um speed talk can you fly an airplane everything you can get every extra skill you can get into your toolbox opens up more avenues to you um and it, it, it's helped it's worked for me so for example i as i said i work as a magician as well there's a casting director I'd, I'd come across and she'd never cast me in anything, but I'd met her numerous times. She had a last minute casting come in for a magician in, a, in an advert. And she went straight to my agent and said, oh, can Chris create a little self-tape here? Well, it wasn't even a self-tape. It was before, before self-tape, video audition or whatever they used to call them. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, absolutely. And I think she messaged on the Friday. I got penciled on the Saturday and confirmed on the Sunday and flew out to Romania and filmed an advert. And it was just, it was that quick, but she knew that I had that skill in my little toolkit down there. So she knew that, Oh, I've not got to cast the net far and far and wide. I can do that. So it does pay off in certain cases and I'm always, and you, you can never stop adding to your toolkit as well. It's always important to keep going anything you can find. I don't really, I don't do skins work anymore. I don't do stilt walking anymore. They kind of drop off the ladder a little bit at the bottom mm. of as I learn uh, better paid ones, because, you know, this is our job. It's not a hobby. You want to earn whatever you can. Um, but, yeah, the, a, a burgeoning toolkit is very, very important. Mm. So where, where, where did Equity come on that journey? I joined Equity uh, as a student member whilst I was at Bretton Hall, and it just sort of sat in the background. I then up upgraded to, you know, full fat Equity as soon as I graduated. Um <laughs> Oh, that's, that's a good phrase for it, actually. Um, so I did that. And then I didn't I didn't engage with equity at all up until about 2014. So I must have been mm. 12, 13 years into my career by that point. Um, other than they helped me out a couple of times. I had a couple of commercials where they they buggered up the paying. I had a panto that closed a week and a half early. Um which got taken to court via equity. They did all of that, which was brilliant. So I knew I knew who they were and what they did. I just never felt like I wanted to go to a meeting or I, I had no idea what what would happen at them. I finally convinced myself to go along to one and I was bored rigid. It was one of the dullest <laughs> two hours, two and a half hours, felt like 10 hours that I'd ever spent. It was just one person talking, the chair of the meeting, on and on and on quite monotonously and about a load of things I had no interest in or had no understanding of and at no point was anything ever explained to me. For some reason, I decided to go back and try it again. And the chair was missing. I, I don't know where he was that particular time, but someone was standing in and it was a, a little bit easier. And I knew a little bit more about the stuff that they were talking about, but not much. But I slowly kind of egged my way in. And I think because a lot of branches uh, struggle to get people involved and active and standing on mm -hmm. committees, I got, and I, 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 I'm aware of how this sounds, but I got groomed to stand for committee which I, I did, again, rabbit in headlights, not really know what was going on. Um, but from that, I started to learn more and more stuff. And ever since I've been on the committee, since 2016, I think I've just I'm, I've stood for the next committee and I've got on, fortunately, mm. which I think will be my, my sixth or seventh. I can't remember now. Um, I've always sworn that I don't, you've always got to talk to people as if they don't know what's going on at all. Not in a patronising sense, in a... Mm. 
they've 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 taken the time to come to a meeting that they don't have to come to they're not paid to come mm. to you, and you're just going to bore them rigid don't do that make it exciting make it vaguely interesting don't go oh yes rule 34 subsection c we need to discuss that because it clashes definitely with article 17 on page <laughs> no. I, think, I think you had the harsh introduction to that kind of meeting type um knowing a little bit of the history and i think that's it a lot of us that um I worked um, on equity contracts predominantly. I found myself working at what was the Leicester Haymarket at the time and the stage management councillor, I didn't know she was stage management councillor at the time, was Fee Mott. And yes. Fee said, oh, you should, we, we want to co-opt people for the stage management committee. You'd be really good. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so my, my introduction to equity activism was through the committee route rather than through the branch route. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm based in the East Midlands and we have a very strong variety heart, but not really, a, we didn't have a general heart and it was quite hard for me to connect up with people. I was touring, but living in the area that I don't necessarily work in. And I think with Manchester and you've got that TV foundation, haven't you? So, mm -hmm. and we all, we all start off not, knowing what equity is about from the inside out. Not so I think anybody who, you know, anybody who is a member and wants to get a little bit of extra benefit out of their mem membership, turn up to a branch. It's all quite new now. So to some extent, no one knows what's happening in the branches. <laughs> so, you know, we have people coming to the, um, I'm currently secretary of the East Midlands branch. And I make a big point of saying, you know, this is our sixth ever meeting. This is our seventh ever meeting. And as far as I'm concerned, up to our first AGM in November, everyone's a founding member. Yeah. And we kind of have that growth, but you've got something a little bit different, haven't you, with um, Manchester? So you've been involved with equity. Was Were you living, are you from Manchester? Is Manchester where you, how did you end up there? No, no, I'm I'm from Leicester originally, and I went to the Haymarket Young People's Theatre when I was growing okay. up, at a little link. And also on that, on Fee Mott, I did, uh, as a kid, I would have been... 14 the christmas production of carousel at the haymarket in 1994 oh. 1993 94 and femot was dsm on it and i met her for the first time as a grown-up at the equity conference in i think it was a london one earl's court perhaps might have been leeds can't remember it was a couple of conferences ago yeah and she wouldn't remember wouldn't remember me from adam at all not, not a chance but i went so i just wanted to say though that I was in a show that you DSM'd in 1994 and I'm now here doing this and you do amazing things, Brett Thank you so much for everything you've done. And it was just so nice to meet. And she went, oh, right, crikey, I feel old, obviously, as anyone would do in that circumstance. I'm not saying she's old at all, but that's it, what people it's say. phenomenal. I mean, one of the, um, Fee um, was awarded an honorary life membership a couple mm. of conferences ago. Yeah. And just being, she wasn't supposed to be at conference and to get her to conference to award her something special, I think they had a lot of trouble kind of trying to explain why she needed to be there. <laughs> she's one of the she's one of the people that really gave me the the grounding of what a stage manager should be. Because mm. um, you're never going to be in the limelight, and actually, quite a lot of stage managers don't want to anyway. However, we don't want to be invisible, and I think that's a line that you walk with backstage and with stage management stuff is how do you nurture your sense of self-worth and you know a little bit of creativity because that's why you're in the entertainment industry but also not wanting to you know be seen all the time and she was really fundamental to helping me understand what it is to be a good stage manager it, um, it's it's tough with stage managers because yeah. by by sort of by definition of their job they're very good at organising things. Mm -hmm. So they're the kind of people you want on the committee. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard to come across ones who want to come on the committee because, as you say, they, they like to be hidden away in the background, yeah. wearing yeah. black. No, it, I kind of discovered that uh, you know, stage manager's job is to be invisible, but the problem yeah. is the better you are at your job, the more invisible you become, and you can yeah. be in danger <laughs> of just 
losing yourself i think yeah. it's going to be quite common we're, um, we're very lucky that we've had a stage manager on the committee for a number of years uh yeah. in manchester who stood down uh during the transitional period but we've got a new one joined us for uh for the next committee which is just great because you always want to have as many aspects of the industry covered yes yeah, as- staff isn't it saf staff yes saf horrocks yes so yes yeah, so saf has been on the um stage management committee as well I mean, yeah. the stage managers that are on on the equity committee for stage management. I mean, they are phenomenal. I mean, mm-hmm. I've sat a few years. It must where... be the best organised committee there is out of all the committees. It, it, it's an interesting committee, and and one that the staff members. At one point, we did have two members of staff working with us because, and they asked, "Would it be okay if both members of staff worked with us?" Because those kind of who's going to work with the stage management committee? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we we don't. We didn't. I mean, I didn't. I'm not currently on the, the stage management committee, but I claim them as my own. Um, <laughs> yeah, they You know, it's um, it, it it's the one thing I think with equity that gives me hope in this current climate of political dis- internal destruction. Generally, is that you you can't. It's very hard to align with a political party and this sense of celebrity popularity that goes on at Westminster. But having equity and being able to have this entity that can facilitate activism is just the thing that gives me, you know, hope. It also it has its own problems, but without it, I really don't know where my consciousness would lie. I mean, how do you how do you sort of fit in that way? Uh, politically speaking, you mean? Yeah, just sort of the you know having an entity that you can act within and not being exposed to the wider. I nightmare. I. I, hmm, tricky. I'm not into politics. Oh, I haven't been into politics a lot, but I have been more so for the last seven or eight years. Mm. I find myself politically homeless, personally. I agree yeah. with aspects of a lot of parties. Yeah. By no yeah. means all parties. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I made my peace, not peace with it. That's not the right. It's like I was in some sort of argument, <laughs> existential <laughs> argument with it. I may, I, I understood at very early doors that equity is political without being party political. Yeah. There was a person on our previous committee who was very, very, very political and mm. kept wanting to go out and do all the political things. We're going, well, you can, but you, you can't wear your equity t shirt when you're doing it it's... Not and represent equity. Yeah. So it, it is a tricky one, but it is. Yeah. A lot of people look at equity and assume everyone's a Labour supporter or a Labour member. And it, and it imagine... really is not the case. No, there was, there was a lot of... I'd say a vast majority probably are, maybe not yeah. carrying members, yeah. but and I, and I... there's a lot of Greens, a lot of Lib Dems. And yeah. in the old variety sector, I'm led to believe, because it's what they always told me, there's a lot of Conservatives in there as well. So yeah. it, 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 does it it's, all bases. it's an interesting navigation through different types of people, through different industry sectors mm. and I, I mean my own my only exposure to to politics in that way is pretty much the same as you for I, I don't know what my understanding of politics would be if I hadn't have been an equity member mm. worked on the contracts realized that there's a structure there's a way that I should be expected to be treated mm. I think that's what equity in terms of contractually has always been important for me and negotiating contracts but the the wider campaigning, it's tricky. I mean, before the universal structure um, was established, where you know, you've know you held a foothold with Manchester, and I hope we're going to be able to come to that, mm. um, I was very much active with the online branch because was didn't really have a geographic place to be. Mm. But as a digital nomad, as you know, someone who's really pushing forward on sort of how can we communicate through digital, um, so I was doing their equities online branch um and for our digital summit so we didn't have an agm in the same way that branches did so coming from the committee route into branches rather than from the branch going on to committees it's always been a bit of a fascination well how do different branches work and seeing all of your social media and seeing how you communicate with you know members on the ground because the committees are quite isolated you know they 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 don't really communicate with the membership as well as they could, let alone go to the outside world. Mm. Uh, but when we were doing our sector, we had a speaker from Sagafra, um, Washington branch. Oh, wow. 
Um, and just the Washington branch of sag has more members than the entirety of equity. <laughs> and that's just sag That's not American Equity. Yeah. It's not the Screenwriters Guild. It's not the directors. Just sag um, And it really brings home to me of how phenomenal equity is as an organisation structure, really. Mm. And I'm going to try and find out the number. But at one point, I did a calculation and there was about 55 members of staff for equity. That included IT, cleaning staff, and two people who work on front desk. Right. So the fact that equity looks after film, TV, audio, variety, negotiates all the contracts, mm. does the Disney contracts, does the RSC, does the national. Yeah. And, and as members, you know, 56, you know, I think 47,000 members of that sort of number, getting the attention of the people that our our membership money is paying to do their job. They're doing their job. They haven't got the extra time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, so, you know, it's, it's an amazing industry which keeps evolving and changing. And, you know, mm. with all the sector sailor, sailor sector stuff that you do, <laughs> you've also started to move into immersive because that's another sector that crosses that film technology and per- live performance has kind of changed i mean there's been promenade theater and theater in the round but this emergence of immersive you know you mentioned in our in our pre-show chat yeah. which um, really makes me happy because i'm very interested in immersive. <laughs> so just tell us a little bit about how you've been how you discovered immersive uh i got offered a job that's kind of how I discovered it, really. Cool. Like, like I say, I'll do anything for a fiver. Is that um, your agent? So your agent? No. Student, so there's just... a, a company that are a uh, street theatre company, essentially, but that does it a disservice. It does a heck of a lot more than just street theatre. I've been working with them for over twenty years now, mm. and they do jobs. So this weekend, I was at the Goodwood Revival, which is Goodwood, which is near Chichester on the south coast. Mm-hmm. They have a couple of festivals every year because Goodwood's got a horse racing circuit, glorious Goodwood. It's got a racing track for cars, albeit not like a, a Silverstone. It's much mm-hmm. more than that. Um, And it has a thing called the Festival of Speed in the summer, which I last worked out 15 years ago when I played Peter uh, Peter Perfect in the Wacky Races. And I got to drive my Turbo Terrific up and down the track, the Goodwood Hill Climb, which is very famous. Um, So I got to do that. And then in September every year, they have a thing called the Goodwood Revival, which is a car meet, but it's classic. So yeah, it, it, I, I was at the festival theatre um, for a couple of oh, years, okay. and it always reminded me the the good one. It always reminded me of Silverstone meets Ascot, <laughs> with yeah. a bit of Mary Poppins. Yeah, that's, that's that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's a three day event. I think it's 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 quite an expensive event to go to as a punter. Certainly mm. in the space I was working in, it was a minimum. I think it was eight hundred quid. Per person, I had seven hundred people in one of in my big room, and that went up to a thousand pounds for the smaller, more exclusive room where we had lords and ladies. So the immersive, so so this, I mean, street theatre is a natural progression of of immersive. I mean, the engagement yes. that you need to have with your audience, the improv skills. Yes, that you need. this this was all. It, it wasn't a show as such. Mm-hmm. We were doing the whole event is themed around uh, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, as in the eras, not the age groups. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the tents I was in was all about Second World War. So I was playing uh, Brigadier Haddock. And then uh, my best mate, who was also in the company, was playing, uh, what was he, Squadron Leader, uh, mm-hmm. Squadron Leader Vipon Clark. And then we had uh, another actor playing a Navy. So we had three kind of from the, from the three different main aspects of uh, the armed forces. And then we had a couple of girls as well uh, being that one of them, Scott's wife. I'm not saying girls in a derogatory manner, <laughs> but, but they were treated derogatorily because that's the era that we were in, that they were women's air force, not air yeah. force, they were women's air force. Yeah, anyway, that, so we had those. Representation well. and, and you know, yeah. how, how you mediate that as well as a performer and an improv um, to keep it within context yeah. yes so i mean we, we kept it as as very much they still referred to us as sir etc i mean we were we outranked them anyway but as uh, sir and they were they were very deferent to us but as the people arrived to come into our big big marquee and marquee again does it a disservice it was incredibly well themed they came through a couple of extra rooms first where they met us and we 
uh, but, but it, they're coming to an event. Uh, probably 80% of the people who come come dressed up as well, as in, in full uniforms from the period or mm-hmm. as uh, 1950s with mm-hmm. all the hair done. There's all, all, all the reenactments, all the role plays, yeah. sort of live action role yeah. play. All Everybody that really invests into that, it, which is lovely. Balance, yeah. And so when they arrive, we start going, oh, you're here. You're if they're dressed in 50s or 60s, oh, you're very futuristic. Look at you here. In 20 years' time, everybody will be wearing what you're wearing. <laughs> that type stuff. Or if they're if they come in an American uniform, they're late. You're late. What are you doing here? You're late. Because the Americans were late to both world wars. So regard, even if they were first in the queue, the Americans were late. That's what we said to them. And basically, we just, we just took the mick out of them for for a couple hours as they arrived I, you know really oh it's really you've come dressed like that Wait, that shirt hasn't seen an iron today has it clearly no tardy that's what that is <laughs> and you can really re- but they love it they find it hilarious and then get them to stand up on a, a stool and pretend to be a spitfire for a little bit do a loop the loop in front mm-hmm. of all their friends um oh it's really really embarrassing sir but you appear to have gone to put your socks on today it's the fashion these days is not to wear socks i think you should go home and get some socks and it's great so we do a little bit of that as they go in Mm. And then we, throughout the day, we go around the tables. We do a champagne toast where we lead them. So the, the, the premise of that was I've had some very good news that morning. Uh, so I've decided to buy everybody in the, in the marquee a drink, 700 people. Yeah, not me as an actor. I didn't do that. <laughs> uh, so we're having a champagne toast for it. And my my reasoning is I had some very good news that uh, I, I've had on very good authority that the war will be over by December, meaning our boys will be home before Christmas. You heard it here, for, here first, folks. The war will be over December 1940 which obviously is a joke in itself as well. But then we all do a cheers and I get them all to stand to attention. 700 people mm. in a room. It's it's just a lovely, mm. lovely way of doing it. And if you if you can be quick-witted and you can uh, chat your way out of situations, it's a really good fun job to do as well. Yeah, and um, as I say, the, the sort of comedy, you know, presenting and comparing and mm. I think taking framing an event within a narrative so that when everybody arrives you gradually from the beginning of the event to the end of the event you navigate them through this story and I think that immersive nature of having that common script amongst the cast Mm. is you know is really you know is is really key no thank you for sort of sharing that journey I mean one of the things that I'm um going to I'm rescheduling my, I'm planning my schedule going towards Christmas at the moment and trying to work okay. out how can I fit my work in and actually <laughs> get some personal development stuff in because everything moves so fast in tech mm. that just trying to keep up with things. And one of the events that I'm trying to get to is the um, Immersive Experiences Network. Um, and it's one of those things that it's across my um, radar and I would quite like to make sure these sorts of things get distributed to the equity branches and so telling you here in Manchester it's taking place for one day on the 9th of October they do several but they're key practitioners and um, um, directors and performers and industry professionals who are doing immersive and just examining what is immersive technology what is immersive um, genres from you know this from so they've got scare horror and immersive dance and promenade theater and live action role play and um you know um you know all of these sort of talks Hmm. um it's a great day with people sort of meeting up and being able to talk about future projects and people looking to employ people for their future projects Hmm. and it's things like that that i would really like to have little equity trips to yeah Uh, that sounds good that we can take members um, down to places because I think we've got a little little bit of budget that I think branches never used to have before. Yeah, so, yeah it's just I'm oh. really 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 pleased that you were able to come and join me on the show. No, it's been lovely. It's been fascinating talking to you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So what hap- what's what happens next for you and what's happening next um, with Manchester? So- so this week has gone gone from uh, immersive theatre when I grew my own moustache and everything. It was brilliant. Through to this week, I've been doing voiceover stuff. I've uh, had some live calls this week uh, to record new things there. Tomorrow, I'm working as a magician. Uh, I work at Manchester United on their home games. So I go around corporate suites and stuff. I am not the resident magician. That's my friend Matt. I work for him. But there's normally about seven or eight of us every game minimum, which is quite nice. So I've got a couple hours of that. Then Monday, I'm in uh, I'm in uh, Lincoln for my Panto press launch. Um, I'm doing Aladdin there this year at New Theatre Royal. So we've got all of the cast together 
and various creatives. Uh, and I've not met any of them yet, so that's been quite good fun. Got a day running around in costume, having photos and videos. Um, and then what do I do? I've, Which I can't is remember East Midlands venue. We're about to embark on a mapping exercise because one of the problems oh, right. with the East Midlands branch is that we, <laughs> we have no idea what's in the East Midlands. It's quite hilarious, <laughs> really. Um, as industry professionals, you know, we've kind of got this branch now that equity have gone, hey, look, you can have this branch. And apart from trying to get people to us, which is great, mm. we're also kind of going, so so what do we all do? <laughs> yeah. And well, if you, want, if you want an inside man, I, once I get there, I can I can certainly Absolutely. push people Absolutely. Well, your how way. long what, are you? How long are you were there for Panto? Oh, might have to uh, get you. Might, might have to get you over there. But yeah, just you know, members as well. You know, when we're over, when you're over there, we'll have to try and see how you know the branch can connect up and things and yeah, how that absolutely. might work. Um, I know you've been. I, I, you know, I do try and get to different branches. I work up in Newcastle quite a bit, and I've tried to go to there once. I've been to Liverpool. I've been to Sheffield branch. Um, I've, I I do go all over i've been doing yeah. stuff down in suffolk my other half lives in suffolk and i've worked a lot down there over the years so <laughs> yeah if, if you want to make an equity place. branch happy do turn up at their meetings because you will make <laughs> eternally happy to see new yeah. people yes. so you know i think the size thing we talked a little bit about the size just before we conclude i just want to set a, mm. a foundation really for people who think equity is this big organization as i said about the amount of staff but the big thing about branches is that there's nine committee members and with an additional person in the room, which makes it 10, decisions for the whole branch can be made. We really are talking about, you know, if you want to make change within your industry and there's a group of you and you turn up to a meeting and you tip everything over the amount of 10, 15, 20 people, you have a group that has a voice that can be directed into a place where you really can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really powerful thing to realise about an equity membership. I think um, on that, I, very importantly, we've had a, a couple of incidents recently where uh, people, individuals who are members, who, but who don't necessarily engage with the branch, have gone, this is wrong, this shouldn't be happening, why aren't my union doing something? And our response is, well, you are your union. If you want these things to happen, mm -hmm. you've got to come and make them happen. Yeah. We, yeah. as volunteers on committees or on councils or anything like that, we're not your slaves. We will happily help you in any way we can. But the change needs to come from you. So you need to be the change. So we yeah. called it being um, turn your anger into activism. Yeah, and it, it, to, it is tricky, um, but it, we really can make a difference. I mean, again... Yeah. Just an example of how change can happen. Um, the Actors Centre in London um, has had a folding implosion with it being taken over by a corporate entity, which hasn't realised how important the Actors Centre was in, the, in London. And some of those people who were part of the Actors Centre um, indirectly talked to a friend of mine that has nothing to do with the entertainment industry who said to me do I know about the actor centre and I went well I know there is an actor centre but tell me more and she told me of the struggle that they were having and as individuals they were finding it hard to contact the union they were phoning and they were emailing and but I had a conversation with them and said well are you members and they were like yes we're members but no one's going to listen to us and I'm like well how many members have you got and she went oh I don't know about 50 and I was like OK, which branch are you associated with? And it was the London um, mm -hmm. branches. And at the time, there was like four branches and we couldn't work out which one it was. But they were eventually introduced by talking to someone from the other branches. So me in this case, introduced them to the appropriate branch. They went to a meeting. They met with the councillor, which was Howell at the time, Howell Morgan. They put together a motion and at the next council meeting, equity were paying their uh, insurance costs. Oh, brilliant. So, you know, they're really, it, it is getting involved as members is really, yeah. really important. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, oh. and may, when you visit the East Midlands, we may have to get you over to the uh, East Midlands branch, even if it's oh, only through to. Zoom with some of yeah. your cast members as well. Welcome you to our, our <laughs> Zoom meetings. Absolutely. <sighs> So with that, I will say thank you very much and I will end the stream. Mm -hmm.